Hi, and welcome back to this biological psychology video course. And in this section, section six, we're going to talk about attention and consciousness. Now, this is the introductory video, video 6.1. So let's start with a little bit of reading. As, uh, as throughout this course, we're going to use the OpenStax textbooks, which you can download for free from uh, OpenStax.org. And more specifically, we're going to use from the psychology textbook, uh, chapter four, states of consciousness. Uh, but mostly the reading for this, uh, this section is actually the slides or the videos themselves, because there is not that much in the OpenStax textbooks about, uh, about attention and consciousness, even though I feel that attention and consciousness are really very important aspects of uh, human cognition and biological psychology. Um, I also, also uh, like to recommend a more accessible uh, book. And in this case, I would like to recommend uh, Why Red Doesn't Sound Like a Bell. There it is. Uh, written by Kevin O'Regan, a uh, recently retired uh, psychologist uh, professor from, uh, from Paris. And in this book, he describes his uh, sensory motor approach. Now, what is the sensory motor approach? It's a little bit abstract. So if you really want to understand what it means, I recommend that you read the book, which, is, uh, which I really do recommend. But basically, it refers to the idea that perception and consciousness are, are all about predicting the outcomes of our actions. Right? So that when we... What, when we see something that what we're actually doing is making some kind of inference of what would happen if we act upon the thing that we see. That sounds very abstract, but again, as I said, uh, Kevin O'Regan makes it quite clear in his, uh, in his book. And I think what I really like about it is that it is a mix of philosophy and psychology, um, as is, I hope, this, uh, this section about attention and consciousness. So what are we going to uh, see in this section? In video 6.2, the next video, we're going to take a look at attention. And we're going to take a look at spatial attention, so attending to one location in space uh, and not some other location in space, right? Very familiar form of attention. We're also going to take a look at temporal attention, uh, so attending to one moment in time, pay, or essentially pay more attention at one moment in time than at some other moment in time. Uh, and we're also going to take a look at uh, the neurobiology of attention. And specifically, we're going to look at the biased competition theory uh, proposed by John Duncan, whom we've met before, and, uh, and others. Then in video 6.3, we're going to get a little bit, of, uh, little bit philosophical with consciousness. So we, we're going to describe the philosophy to some extent of consciousness, even though we're not going to delve deep into philosophy. And we're also going to talk about the global workspace theory of consciousness, which is a a theory that explains some aspects of consciousness, even though, of course, consciousness is still largely a mystery and we cannot explain all aspects of consciousness. Now, and then finally, in video 6.4, we're going to take a look at sleep and dreams. So the various stages of sleep. And we're also briefly going to consider what dreams are, whether they have any meaning, very little, I, uh, I would say. And uh, what most of all, what we do not know about dreams. In general, this, uh, this section, especially the, the parts about consciousness and sleep, are as much about what we don't know than they are about what we do know. But that, I think, is what makes it extra exciting. Now, with that, let's move on to the next video, video 6.2, in which we're going to talk about attention.